Hello and welcome to Continental's tutorial video online course of how to install our tire pressure monitoring system, the Conti Pressure Check. I'm Tom Fanning, Trey Thompson and I will be working together to show you how simple and quick it is to install the Conti Pressure Check system on a typical Class 8 truck in a shop setting. Here we have the complete Conti Pressure Check system and the four additional sensors to complete an install on a 10-tire Class 8 vehicle. We'll now lay these pieces out and go through them individually so that you understand the parts required for the kit and the individual installation steps. So when you open the kit, what you'll find in the box are the following contents. You have the instruction manual and DVD, the six sensors and the additional sensors for the tire pressure monitoring system, as well as the squeegee and glue for their application. This is the main wiring harness for the system. You can see the wires where we route through the cab to pick up additional connections, as well as the central control unit, the brain for the system of Conti's tire pressure monitoring system, Conti pressure check. This is the configurable mounting bracket for the CCU and the hardware where we'll show bolting to the frame for the CCU placement. Here's the main power supply for the system, as well as the electrical connections to pick up the 12 volts the wiring harness for the display unit itself, as well as the display unit, which shows tire pressure and temperature on the end cap display and a windshield mounting kit for that. Here we have the additional wiring harness for the auxiliary antenna, which is important in longer wheelbase applications for the mounting harness, the hardware, the antenna and protective enclosure, or if we want to mount the system to pick up expandability for tire pressure monitoring in trailer applications. Now that we've covered the individual components of the kit, we wanted to make sure you had the four supplies in addition to general mechanics tools that are required to complete the install. The first two of those products available from any tire maintenance store or tire repair shop are liquid pre-buff as well as an interliner scraper. The next two tools you need available from Continental are the tire sensor cup mounting tool and the programming device that will be used at the end to program the individual tire sensors to the system to marry the unit. Okay, now that you see all the individual components of the kit, we'll run you through the installation steps. The first thing we're gonna concentrate on are the installation of the tire pressure sensors in the individual tires is step one. Then we'll move to the mounting of the bracket for the central control unit, how the central control unit is attached, and then how that wiring harness is run. The next step will be the installation of the auxiliary antenna and wiring harness, including the provided bracket. And then finally, we'll move into the cab where you'll see the tap for the 12 volt power for the unit, the wiring of the display, and the mounting of the display within the cab.
The next step in the installation process is the mounting of the bracket that will hold the CCU in place. Trey's already been down here taking a look at the frame. What do you think, Trey? Well, we want to choose a location that's near the back of the cab, just below the frame rail, but not too low that it could easily be damaged. If we came in on these four studs ahead of this brace and mounted there, what do you think about that? I think that'll be a good location. We want to avoid airlines and other obstructions. We, we have the opportunity here to use some existing bolt holes so we don't have to drill into the frame. Okay, so then if we just took this four bolt pattern, transferred it to our brace and drilled the mounting bracket, we could mount here and be good to go. Sounds like a plan. Okay, let's do that. Okay, Trey, I think it's time to move on to the mounting of the additional receiver assembly. Now, what is the purpose of this assembly? The additional receiver is important for long wheelbase applications and for future expandability for trailer use. Okay, so if we just pop the additional receiver into the mounting bracket, we slide it down until it locks in place. Now, we have to find a, a vibration proof or resistant area closest to the back of the wheelbase of the truck. Is that correct? That's correct. We've gone ahead and drilled some holes in this piece of angle iron and bolted it to the bottom of this cross member. Now we just take the supplied wiring harness and we're going to route this from that bracket assembly along the frame and back up to the bracket that the CCU is affixed to. Yeah, if you'll notice on this wiring harness it actually has a double end on uh, this end. This goes in series with the CCU and the cable that runs into the cab. Okay, and I see here from the length of this harness that we have plenty of room to work with on longer wheelbase vehicles such as class six or seven vans and conversions. Box trucks, yeah. Okay, great. Let's get to work. All right, we've got that attached. What about the routing of the wiring harness tray? Tom, the important thing here was that we stayed along the inside of the frame rail. We ran it along these existing wiring harnesses. That way we know there's a good chance that it's not going to be caught up in the drive shaft or any road debris. Okay, and so we can start zip tying from this end and that brings all the additional extra harness in the length up by the CCU bracket and we can tie it up out of the way. Yeah, let's clean this up, make it look good. Okay, great. Trey's working on tightening up the bracket for the CCU unit. How's that coming with the wiring harness, Trey? Well, Tom, we've got the bracket good and tight. Now we're going to connect up our wiring harnesses. We've got the wiring harness from the auxiliary antenna. That's got our male and female end here that's going to go in series. We've got the wiring harness that we ran under the cab and then up through the firewall that's going to connect to the display. So first, we'll connect the wiring harness to the cab, to the wiring harness to the auxiliary connector. Then we're going to connect this into the CCU. Now we'll take our excess wire, we'll put it up out of the way and make sure that it doesn't get caught up in anything. Okay, we've completed the routing of the wiring harness from the CCU and the mounting assembly up through the frame, away from any moving parts or heat sources. We found an existing grommet in the firewall and we've brought the four wires in that require the connection to the rest of the assembly to complete the install through the cab and routing them up over the cab. Now Trey's going to get in, find us a 12 volt switched ignition source so that we can complete the power and energize the wiring. Okay, now we've located our 12 volt switch source. We're gonna make up the connections on the rest of the cable. And it comes supplied with this round eyelet on the end of the hot source. Because of where we've chosen to connect to, we're gonna cut this off and replace it with a spade connector. All right, so we've replaced the eyelet connector with a spade connector. We've connected our ground to a ground source. And now we're gonna plug this into our 12 volt switched. Next we'll make up the remaining connectors that supply power to the display and the CCU. So now I've completed making up my connectors on my wiring harness coming from the CCU as well as the wiring harness coming from the display. Now I'm simply going to connect my brown and white communication wires to each other as well as my red and black power wires for the power to the CCU and the power to the display. Next Tom is going to 
configure the system and teach in the tire positions. So Trey showed us how we hook up the electrical connections in the cab. We're positioning the display unit. The last step and most important step of the process is using the CPC handheld to learn the sensors in each one of the tires. Trey then is gonna show us how that's downloaded from the handheld into the system to completely activate it. But we wanted to walk through the steps of how the handheld works. So if we start with the power up of the handheld, we're going to installation. This is a new installation. We're gonna call this, it's gonna ask for a vehicle number, but just for simplicity's sake, we'll call this truck number T5. So it is a truck and bus. You can see you can program trailer or married units. This is a truck and bus. We do have the additional receiver unit antenna system in the back. So we say yes, three axles on this vehicle as well. That is correct. And then we go through different vehicle configurations here. This is a typical class eight configuration, eight drive tires and two steers, as opposed to two and two. So we're gonna select the correct wheel configuration and then now we need to set the values for nominal pressure. On this truck, we're gonna select 118 PSI for the front because those are 16 ply steer tires and then no lift axle position on this vehicle. Now on the drive axle, we go here, those are set. Now it's time for the individual tire sensors to be taught into the handheld unit. So we press the go button and we're gonna start, as you can see, requested the left rear outside. So, we start with the sensor unit with the handheld, moving it around the tire. So all we do, we've now learned the left rear outside tire sensor. The next position is the left front outside and we'll continue that to, till we record all 10 of the tire positions for the sensors and they're learned into the handheld. Now that Tom has completed teaching in each wheel position, we're gonna download the data from our handheld unit into the central control unit. We've chosen a position for our display and we've plugged in our wiring harness to the back of the display. Next, we're gonna connect the handheld unit to the display through this diagnostic cable. So first, I'll plug this into my handheld unit. I'm going to spin this around so that I can see a little bit better. Plug that in. I'm going to turn the ignition on. The first message that I get is system not configured, which is what we would expect. So next, I'm going to transfer the data from here into the system. Now the upload is in process. Got the message that my upload was successfully completed. As you can see, I now have a bird's eye view of my wheel configuration for this vehicle and it's starting to populate. Now that each tire position is represented on our screen. We have the option to switch from bar to PSI and set our temperature to Celsius or Fahrenheit, whichever our preference. To make that change, we're gonna hit the set button. We're gonna scroll down to the bar Celsius. We hit okay, and as you can see, it switches to PSI and Fahrenheit. If that's what we want, we hit set to keep that setting. And now you can see the tire pressure represented in PSI. If I want to view the temperature for each tire position, I simply hit this button and I toggle from pressure to temperature. To get back to pressure, hit this button again. All right, that completes another successful installation. Now we're just gonna head out for our test drive. We hope our tutorial that we've provided today has shown you how simple and easy it is to install a Conti pressure check system in a typical Class 8 truck. If you have additional questions or need more information, please refer to www.contipressurecheck.com. 
Thanks. We appreciate your business.